If you have your Bibles, Hebrews chapter two, one little verse that we're gonna look at drifting, and the author of Hebrews gives us a great warning after an entire chapter of Hebrews chapter one. He basically sets up that Christ is Lord. He is supreme. He is our, not only our Messiah, but he's the, the one that we need to follow, the one that we need to love, the one that we need to live for. And after this, the writer of Hebrews says this in Hebrews 2, 1. For this reason, we must pay closer attention to what we have heard so that we do not drift away from it. So many of us in 2019 went through the Bible chronologically. We read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. A lot of material. It was like drinking from a fire hydrant sometimes. And we just did a flyover of the Bible, but we learned so much, we experienced so much. I've loved hearing so many of the testimonies of what that year meant for you, what it meant for me, how we learned the things that God showed us as we looked at his Bible in its entirety over 12 months. But look at it, we must be careful to pay attention to what we have heard. If we study the Bible, we learn God grows us, God plants seeds in us, and yet we forgive them, or we forget them, then we will be on our way to a slow and dangerous drift. We'll be drifting away from the truth that God has placed in our hearts. And if you're new to this, our, our compass, our moral and spiritual goal to stay focused with is God's holy word. That is our primary reason that we come in together. We're gonna worship God by learning and lifting up his word. And as we leave these walls, it is our goal to live out God's word and to allow God's word to live in us and through us for everyone around to see. And that is our goal. And if we're not living that today, we've probably drifted. So I wanna look at four dangers of drifting or really causes of drifting, and it's A, B, C, D. So it's easy enough for us Aggies to understand, maybe, okay? The reasons we drift, number one is we're asleep. There was a guy in Miami several years ago who got on one of these pool rafts, cheap little $5 pool raft, and he was hanging out in the ocean there, the Atlantic, and all of a sudden he woke up, and he was miles from shore. He had fallen asleep on his raft and the current had taken him away and he looked up and he really didn't even know which way to paddle because he didn't know which way shore was. We can fall asleep spiritually. We can fall asleep in a relationship like a marriage relationship and not even pay attention to the world around us and the current of the culture will take us away from where God wants us and where we know we need to be. We can fall asleep. In fact, Paul tells the Ephesian church in Ephesians 5, wake up. It's time to spiritually wake up. And many of us sometimes, we just doze off in our spiritual journey, our spiritual walk, and it's not, we're not alert, we're not awake. In fact, we have these little speed bumps or little road bumps that started about 30, 35 years ago. They started putting them on the road, okay? We call them road pimples, but I know that's not the, the name for them. But when you, when you, the reason they put them on there, because they were invented well before texting, okay? So it's not texting bumps, okay, to remind you to get back to, to paying attention to the road. They were for people who fall asleep. Now we have rumble strips on the side. The reason they did that is because these truckers that were driving all night would get so sleepy. And what would they do? Their big semi would drift off the road. And so our, our highway department said, we've gotta have something to remind them to get back into the center of the lane because they're falling asleep. That is an issue when we talk about our spiritual journey with God. Are we spiritually alert? Are we awake? Are we, are we very well attentive to the road and the path and the journey that God has us on? We're spiritually asleep when you, when you start drifting. The B is we get busy. Second thing, second reason that we drift is you get busy. Life gets hectic. God wants us to do things. He wants us to worship together. He wants us to pray. He wants us to love. He wants us to forgive. He wants us to serve him. He wants us to get into his word daily. And when we focus on his word, we're gonna stay in the center of the lane or we're not gonna drift from the shore. We're gonna stay right where God wants us to, to be. But the problem is life gets hectic. It gets chaotic, it gets busy. 
And all of a sudden we add this to our schedule, we add this and we add a lot of good things. And we often neglect the best thing. And so when we look at staying spiritually on course and not drifting to the right or the left, we have to look at the fact that is our life so busy that we've neglected what God wants to be a priority in our life. That's a reason we drift. We get so busy, so many things going on that we look up one day. We didn't decide to skip church four Sundays in a row, but man, this, had, this was going on and this got added to the schedule and this came up. And all of a sudden it's been four or five weeks since we've worshiped with the family of God. Or man, we look at our Bible and you go, man, I haven't moved that for four or five days, why? Because life happens and it gets chaotic and it gets busy. But if we're gonna stay on course and not drift, we have to combat the chaos in our life. The C is the current. When you think about a current, I want you to think about the strong cultural influence. There used to be a light current that would drift people away from God's plan, away from his will for your life. Now, starting with the universities and, and even down in the high schools and even the elementary schools, we're teaching things that will pull us away from God's perfect plan given in his perfect word. And we look at the TV and we look at TV shows and we look at even stores that we shop in. Commercials that we see are, are slowly and very powerfully drifting us, pulling us away from God's perfect purpose that he has for your life and my life. The strong cultural current. There was a 61 year old man from the Woodlands. His name is John Baker. He's a retired veterinarian, but he loved to surf as a kid. Loved the water so much that he went to the Coast Guard Academy where they train you to be the master of the ocean. He went into the Coast Guard and served his country in the Coast Guard as an officer till finally he went to vet school and, and retired from the Coast Guard. But this man knows the water. About a year ago, the, the surf looked good. He lived in the woodlands, but he had a little place at Surfside or Seaside. And, and he would go down there only when the surf was good. He went down by himself one afternoon, started catching some waves. And his wife, when he didn't answer his phone at 10 p.m., was concerned. For 13 hours, Mr. Baker, the officer of the Coast Guard, 13 hours later, he looked up and saw bright lights and said, that is my only hope of survival. He paddled and paddled because the, the, it was 55 degrees outside and he was, wanted to battle the hypothermia. And he saw lights and he goes, that's an oil rig. I know what that is. And he woke up a couple workers in the middle of the night as he was just blue and shivering and, and dehydrated and was able to call his wife in the middle of the night and say, I'm alive you know what, this guy knew the water, he understood currents, he understood the rip current, he understood what the, the power was, but he got into a current that was so strong that he could not battle it. Culture today is so extremely powerful in its current, in its pull away from godly principles, away from integrity, away from truth, that even the most trained Christ follower has to really be aware that we don't allow the current of culture to pull us away from where God wants us, that we don't just drift because we're asleep or we're busy, but we know where we are and we cannot fight it. There are lots of currents that are pulling us away from where God wants us. You could be asleep, you could be busy, it could be the cultural current, or you could just be distracted. Distraction keeps us from the Lord and his plans. And distraction is different than busy. Busy is just so many things going on in our lives, but distraction is one thing that will take our focus off of where we wanna go and how we're gonna get there. Distraction is that little smartphone when you're behind the wheel, okay? I've seen some of you on the road. I've, I've honked at you. Put down the phone and drive, please, for the love of our safety and, and the highways. Put down the phone and drive, it's a distraction. I'm, I'm blown away time and time again as I'm driving down the freeway going the speed limit, okay? We'll just, we'll just pretend again. And I see people drifting out of their lane left and right and I drive by and their head is straight down looking at that little distraction. 
I think, what text are you getting? What Facebook post is so important that you're driving a 2,000 pound vehicle 70 miles down the road, but that's more important? How many more things do we have in our spiritual journeys? God has us going in the direction we wanna go and all of a sudden there's something. Oh man, that's so important. Oh man, that's so vital to my well-being that I'm gonna get off course and I'm gonna take my focus off the Lord and his plans. And I'm gonna look down or look away and what happens? We start drifting. We start drifting away from the perfect plan that God has us on. Why? Because there may be something really good that distracts us, but it's not the really best. God doesn't want what's good for you and me. He wants what's best. And oftentimes the enemy knows that when we're on the path and we're following God and we're serving God, we're living where we need to live, how we need to live, that he can take something really good and he can use that as a distraction. And as soon as we focus on that, all of a sudden we start drifting. I've now taught three boys how to drive, okay? We hope. Okay, we're all really hoping. All three of them made the same mistake I made when I was 15, learning how to drive. Keeping it between the lanes, and all of a sudden you see something or someone that you know, and you turn your head, and what happens to the wheel? Turn the wheel with it. It's exactly what happens in our spiritual journey. As soon as we turn our heads and take our eyes off of where we need to be, we drift. There's, those are reasons we've drift. And if you're in a relationship right now with the Lord or with a spouse and all of a sudden that relationship isn't what it once was. It's not as intimate and close and personal as it once was. Understand that probably one of those four things happened. You either was asleep and woke up one day and said, wow, where is my quiet time with the Lord? Where is my worship? Where is my passion? Where is my service? Or maybe in your, in your marriage relationship, you wake up and go, man, where is that that butterfly feeling of, man, I can't wait to serve my spouse. I can't wait to love my spouse. I can't wait to spend time with them. Something happened today at work, or I can't wait to tell them. And maybe that's gone, maybe because you're asleep, because you're busy, because there's a current of things pulling you away or you just got distracted. But there's hope. In this new year, I wanna look at really ways to avoid the drift or the ways that we can stay on track. We're gonna prevent the drift by one thing, by four things, A, B, C, D. We're gonna keep it easy. A, B, C, D, the first thing is accountability. Accountability, our 61-year-old Coast Guard officer, he had one mistake. He understood there were currents out there. He could tell you and draw pictures. He could lead the lecture on currents. He had one issue, he went out surfing by himself. If he'd have had a buddy with him, if he'd have had accountability, as soon as he got in that current, instead of going out and saving it, he could have gone for help and the Coast Guard would have had him 200 yards offshore instead of miles on an oil rig. Accountability, you need someone in your life, I need someone in my life that when we start drifting and getting away from God's perfect plan, when we start ignoring God's word and listening to culture, we need someone in our lives that loves us enough to say, hey man, get back on track. Hey man, you're drifting. You're about to go over the edge. You're about to lose it and you need to get back on track. You need to stop being distracted and stay focused. You need accountability in your life. I need accountability in my life. That way we can live and walk and serve God. That way we can be better employees. That way we can be better spouses, we can be better children or parents. If we have someone that will ask us the difficult questions of how is your walk, how is your journey? Where are you at? How are you serving? How are you loving? How is your reading going? Accountability is the key to staying on track. Now we're so smart, we have technology in our cars, right? Lane assistance. Okay, I didn't know I have that on my, on my truck. It's new to me. I keep it off because um, I pay attention. But, but my son borrowed my truck and he thought it'd be cool to turn it on. And, and I go to change lanes the other day. It was like... Five o'clock in the morning, I don't need a signal. I, I do need a signal. I chose not to use the signal that one time. And I had no idea lane assistance was on. And it fought me. I thought, what in the world is happening? I'm trying to change lanes and it's trying to push me back in the lane. I was like, something is wrong. And then I realized it's just this little button. Now I have control. But the thing is, we need that accountability. We need our lane assistance to be a great friend of yours. It could be a spouse, it could be a friend, it could be a brother or sister in Christ that's gonna say, you are drifting. 
Get back to the middle of the lane. Get back focused on where you're going. That's B. B is be focused. Accountability is great, but be focused. There's a, a, a great passage in Hebrews later on. Hebrews 12, one and two says, therefore, since we have such a great cloud of witnesses surrounding us, let us also lay aside every encumbrance and the sin which so easily entangles us and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. The author of Hebrews is saying, you're on this race. We wanna run well. We wanna run with endurance. Don't let anything distract you. Don't let anything weigh you down. And this is what he says in verse two. Fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Focus on Christ. That's what he says. He says, you're running a race in the finish line. The goal, the ultimate thing that we stay focused on is Christ, the author and perfecter of our faith. We can look at Jesus, we can look at his word, and that keeps us focused on where we are going and how we are to live. You need accountability, but you need to stay focused. You need people constantly reminding you, focus on the goal, on the end game, on the prize. Focus on Christ every day of your life. There are some great things that are gonna distract us. But every morning if we wake up and go, Christ, I'm gonna stay focused on you and your perfect plan for my life, your will, your journey that I'm on. I wanna be with you on that. Stay focused on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. That is huge. The C is commitment. You've got to be committed to everything that you do in, in your walk and journey with Christ. If you talk about a marriage, you're talking about commitment. Love in marriage doesn't mean an emotion, it doesn't mean a feeling, it means a commitment. When I look at Tiffany and I say I love you, it doesn't mean that I get these warm, fuzzy feelings in my stomach every time I see her. It means when I say I love you, I say I'm committed to you. That is love. And when we say we love the Lord, what does it mean? I'm committed to you today. On good days and difficult days, when it's shining, the, one of these days, Chamber of Commerce, beautiful sunshiny days, or even in the midst of the darkest, deepest storm. God, I am committed to you. If you're gonna stay on track, you're gonna grow toward a great relationship with the Lord. It takes commitment. It takes hard work. It takes effort. Those are the things that it requires. And then the D is discipline. And I love this. Vance Havner says, you're either drifting with regards to your salvation because of neglect, or you are growing because of deliberate effort and attention. Which is it for you? Which is it? Are you growing in your relationship with the Lord because of deliberate effort and attention, discipline? I promise you that, that growing and walking and living is not easy, but it takes the daily discipline of saying, God, what do you have for me today? Somebody told me when we were going through the journey of reading through the Bible in the year, I didn't like it because I felt like I was just checking a box. I didn't like it because I felt like it was forced and some days I didn't just get up and, and, and wanna read. I said, man, I've never been in a, part, in, in, in a, a part in my journey with Christ where every day for 365 days, 2020 is so awesome, we get a bonus, 366 days this year. I've never been in a, a point in my journey that every day for an entire year, I woke up and said, yes, Lord, I can't wait to dive into your word. We all struggle. That's why the author of Hebrews says that we need to stay focused, that we are in the dangers of drifting away from the love that we have for Christ. Because even pastors wake up and sometimes we do it more out of duty or out of discipline then we do this just deep desire for man, God, I can't wait to see what you have for me in Leviticus 19. Sometimes we read Leviticus, Leviticus 19 just because it is our discipline of waking up and doing something. Many of you have, have physical goals for 2020. Many of you are gonna, maybe you're gonna lose weight or you're gonna eat better, or you're gonna start exercising. I promise you, not every day for the next 12 weeks are you gonna wake up and go, I can't wait to hit the treadmill. Oh man, I, I can't wait to order a salad because I hate those cheeseburgers. No, you do it out of discipline. Your journey with Christ, your desire to grow your relationship with him comes 
from discipline. It's hard work, but it's worth it. When you do it and when you endure and when you're disciplined, because there are some days that you go, oh, I don't want to read Leviticus 19, but you do it anyway, and then God shows you or reveals something in Scripture And the next morning you wake up with with an excitement of, yes, God, today, show me something in your word. And then there's gonna be days that, man, it's just discipline. And there's other days where it's just gonna be desire and hope and intimacy. But if you're gonna stay on track with God, it requires discipline. Focus, accountability, commitment. That's what keeps us on track. And I think if everyone was being honest, you'd go, hey, there's some relationship. Might be my relationship with the Lord or my spouse or my parents or my friends. There's a relationship that is not where it once was. Stephen, if I'm gonna be honest with you this morning, I've drifted. There was an old couple, when they first got married and were dating, he drove an old pickup truck and she drove right up next to him. You know, there wasn't the middle console, so you could do that, right? Right? Kind of the, we'll go, it's called the redneck way of driving, but I loved it. You put your arm, one arm around the girl, one arm on the wheel. Make a good song. Um, but, and, and after they were married, she still drove there. But you know what? After about 20, 25 years, she was sitting over there. A little buffer between them. She said, honey, why don't we sit next to each other? And the old man, just all the humility in the world, and said, well, honey, It isn't me that moved. I can tell you this. Some of y'all, it took a while. It's like, if you've drifted, if you feel further from God than you once were, it's not God that moved. So this morning, we're gonna gonna really spend some time reflecting on where you are. Take inventory of where you are in your goal, in your journey with Christ. 